you ever look at your knotted earbuds and think, hey, that looks like math? Maybe not, but knots can actually be represented as a mathematical object. Take a piece of string. Tie any knot in that piece of string. Then connect the ends together. In math, this is what we call a knot, a knot with the ends connected, and it actually poses some really interesting challenges. Some examples of knots are this one and this one. I can also make this one, this cool star knot, this pretty knot with eight crossings. Actually, there are infinite knots, so maybe I won't show all of them. These knots look different, but maybe they're the same. Maybe there's some way to untangle the first knot to get the second knot. Let's look at two knots that we know are the same. No matter what I do to this one, I can change it back to the first one with some combination of three kinds of moves. Here are the three kinds of moves. Imagine this string is one part of a knot. You can take that strand of a knot and make a loop in it. This is move one. You can take two strands and overlap them. This is move two. And you can take a strand that's over a crossing and move it to the other side of that crossing. This is move three. And even if these moves all seem really simple, when they're put together, you can modify a knot to be a knot that looks completely different. Let's go back to these knots. Can we prove that these knots aren't the same? How can we be sure that there isn't some really long combination of moves that would change one knot into the other? If we had some characteristic of a knot that never changes, no matter what moves you do to it, then we could see if two knots share that characteristic. If they don't, then the knots have to be different. This characteristic, called a knot invariant, would allow us to prove that two knots are different. Let's talk about one example of a knot invariant. If we take a 2D picture of a knot like this, we can see that there are three different lines. This one, this one, and this one. We can color these lines with three different colors. In this knot, at every crossing, there's the intersection of three different colors. We call a knot tricolorable if you can color it with three colors so that at each crossing, three different colors intersect or all one color intersects. Intersections like this or this are not allowed. So this knot is tricolorable because all three crossings are legal, but this knot is not tricolorable because these two crossings are not legal. So is tricolorability a knot invariant? Is it a characteristic that never changes in a given knot? We have to show that none of the three types of moves affects tricolorability. The first move is fine because this crossing is legal. The second move is fine because these two crossings are legal. And the third move is a little tricky, but all of these crossings stay legal. We can use tricolorability to prove that two knots are different. The red knot is tricolorable and the yellow knot isn't. This proves that these are not the same knot. This might all seem like fun and games, but knot theory is actually useful for more than just playing with string. It can model the knotting of DNA strands or the movement of fluids. And looking at knots in higher dimensions can actually help us understand those higher dimensions. Maybe there's more here than just playing with string.